Watch out! Shh, shh, shh. Quiet! You gotta be going smart about this, all right? Stealth. Stealthy. Uh, that's the thing. There's no stealth in this game. It's an arcane game. Of course there's stealth in it. Yeah, that's the thing. This is the first arcane game without stealth. Every arcane game has stealth. Not this one. All right, then at least let's be smart about how we approach this, all right? We'll that's a good idea. Let's, um, we'll disguise it. Stop it! We'll disguise ourselves as vampires and sneak our way in that yeah, way. That's the other thing. There's no disguising in this one either. Okay, fine. We'll, uh, C4. We'll throw a C4 yeah, at the wall, blow our yeah, own yeah, way you in. You can't destroy terrain either. Okay. Dude! Ah! You're gonna get us killed. We'll sneak in through the. F there has to be a secret tunnel. We'll go underneath. Yeah, that's kind of the other thing. Surprise. So every building, there's three entrances there's the front door, the back door, and then the roof. <sighs> okay, we'll go through the roof, but we'll do it stealthily. All right, here we go. <sighs> I'm not, look, I'm not going to pretend that I fully understand exactly what Arcane might be going for with Redfall anymore. But after crawling my way to the end of this experience, I just have to ask the question, what happened? Redfall, a title who I've been rooting for from the get-go. While people were starting to write this game off, whether it was the 30 FPS lock announcement for Xbox consoles or the always online requirement, the inclusion of de novo anti-cheat, the poorly shown off IGN gameplay, Redfall's been in an uphill battle all the way leading up to its launch. And there was me in the corner waving my arcane flag, really hoping for something special here. Complaining is a bit of a waste of time. So today I wanted to jump in to try to flip the narrative as best I can leading up to the launch of Redfall into reasons why I'm genuinely excited for this game. And I hope you guys are as well. But unfortunately, even the promise of a good, or rooted in an arcane style experience is not really here. It's so far from that, it's unrecognizable almost. To get to get to this boat, right? To get to this boat, you can't you can't get up to the docks over there. I don't, at least I don't think you can. I don't think so. Yeah. And and there's I, no well, way maybe. there's no way to kind of creep through the windows over here to get around the side of them. So yeah. your only real way is to go. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I think we're in the starting area, too, so I think they're kind of trying to maybe guide us a little bit here. Yeah, you do have these small glimpses of the things you love about arcane games. You really gotta squint to see them, but sometimes they're there, and you gotta pull them out and wrestle with them as the arcane experience is constantly at ends with itself. Does it want to be arcane game? Does it want to be a looter shooter? Does it want to be a Far Cry type experience? None of them are winning this endless tug of war and you end up with a Frankenstein hodgepodge experience where none of it's really done all that great. And what is here? There were moments where I start having fun with Redfall. Ooh, it's getting kind of intense. Come here, come get some. Bang, javelin to the face. Oh, who's shooting me? Get out of here, you. All right, heal up. Oh, you're still alive. Ah, get away, get away, get away. Ha <laughs> ha, on fire, heal, and now for the steak. For the steak, where's the steak? There we go, nice. Vampire down. Get out of here. <laughs> but it's completely overshadowed by a myriad of bugs, boring level design, an uninteresting story, a bland open world, unmemorable NPCs. The list goes on and on. Bugs, dumb as bricks AI that plenty of people have already talked about. 
It's just a shame. I'm all for a studio trying to do something new. They want to branch out into a new direction. Great! That's how we get new creative and innovative ideas. Look at Obsidian Entertainment with Pentiment or Grounded or within Bethesda themselves, there's Tango Gameworks, a survival horror guys made Hi-Fi Rush, which I gave a 10 out of 10. I'm all for studios trying to break free of moles. I think it's healthy for them, for their creative energy to try something new. I think it's healthy for us as fans of certain IPs so that those developers can hopefully one day come back to those experiences with fresh ideas. But this just isn't it. Translocating. Bloody Tom's remnants should be somewhere in these camp realms. Now before I do go any further, I want to talk about some of the positives. Because genuinely there's things that I like about this experience. And I know a lot of people have worked really hard on Redfall. There's a lot of developers at Arcane Austin. And I want to make sure that some of them get a level of appreciation from me. For starters, the weapon design. Whoever worked on some of the weapon skins in this game, at least the more creative ones for the legendaries, two thumbs up. They look great. So whether it's a barnacle encrusted shotgun, a bone encased rifle, or a pistol with a clock in the hand grip, it's always interesting to see some of these level of detail in the weapons. I appreciated when I found them, and these are the types of things, yeah, you'd absolutely be paying, what, 10, 15, hell, 20 dollars for in some of these live service microtransaction heavy games, but it's just part of the package here. They looked great. Now, there's the other side of that. I know we said we'd stick positive, but there's the other side of that where the weapons aren't wholly unique from one another. A pistol always functions like a pistol, a sniper rifle like a sniper rifle, an assault rifle like an assault rifle, and so on and so forth. There's no deviation from that. And where you might have in other looter shooter type games, weapons that function differently, look at Borderlands with a sniper that might be full auto or three shot burst. Nothing like that here. It's always almost exactly the same at least the weapons i found maybe there's one out there that i'm missing you do have your levels of rarity from blue green purple and gold those tiers of weapons that you can find and even the bonuses when you start getting those exotic legendary weapons don't really excite me all that much it's usually perks such as increased magazine size or bonus headshot damage that you forget about it once you start using the weapon for a couple minutes the most exciting of them are something along the lines of get health back drain a vampire if you stake them with this weapon sure but it's not really going to change the way i play the game as far as a looter shooter game is concerned it doesn't have enough of the weapon variation to warrant it being an exciting looter shooter i just found myself constantly throughout my playthrough Picking whichever weapon had a green number in its stats, whether it was more damage or a better fire rate that offset the damage per second, those sorts of things. That's what I based my decision on. Nothing else. I never really found anything worth keeping or a weapon worth saving because it was just so much fun to use. While on the subject of weapons, might as well touch on gunplay here as well. It worked. I liked it. I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. Using Deathloop as a benchmark, I don't think it was necessarily better or worse than what Deathloop had, just simply different. And people are going to have their preferences towards certain ways that guns work in different games. I personally prefer death loops that just instantly resonated with me but i don't really think it was bad here it was fine i enjoyed it for what it was other things i liked the environments themselves yes the w open world of redfall was pretty boring we'll talk more about why in just a bit but at least when you're going into a department store a sporting goods shop a lighthouse a small museum a movie theater all of the environments that you could actually go into felt incredibly detailed they were lived in there were tons to see the environmental storytelling used helped flesh out some of these locations, although there was a definitive overuse with environmental storytelling throughout Redfall. Basically, the whole game is sort of explained that way, which is unfortunate. It's through notes or visions of past echoes from people's experiences. But when you do get into some of these environments, there's interesting things to see. For example, when I was playing with Arcane, we found a room with a named vampire in the basement. Find civilians in here. That's cool. Well, hey, that's that's like a nice little piece of environmental storytelling, yeah, right? Like look, there's a named look, vampire. Named vampire, and then they're keeping this? they're keeping score on which of the score. cultists brought the most people in. Again. This is why it's so painful for me, is because it's like I'm having fun. Yeah. I like this stuff. And then and then there's something that comes along and yeah and, and then just kind of the enemy yeah. ai just stares at me as i shoot him in the head <laughs> that 
that type of environmental storytelling, I think is excellent. I love to see that. Unfortunately, again, there's always a but with Redfall, it seems. Unfortunately, environmental storytelling is 90% of the experience here. You're going to see almost the entire game through other people's eyes, through notes left behind, through images and echoes of what happened in the past. It's over and over and over. And while again, there's cool things. For example, that freezer, there's actually a note on the other side of the map that me and Arcane Realm found that alludes to that very thing. So there's connected environments to some of that. At the end, I just didn't care. I didn't want to read another note on some random victim that got killed by the vampires. I, I, it's like being grounded, stuck in a room with no windows. You know your friends are right outside playing and having fun, but you can't see them. You can only hear them. And that's all you get to experience of the fun that they're having. You can't join in for yourself. Why? To get back to other things that I appreciated about Redfall, the atmosphere, the general tone of the game I thought was very appropriate, and the music as well. While it's not something that I'm going to be listening to outside of the game itself, it did really lend itself well to help elevate the tone that Redfall was trying to convey. Whether it was the music playing back at the, the safe houses, or if it was out in the open world when you get into combat, it always felt appropriate, it felt elevating to the experience as a whole. And then on top of that, you have some things going on, such as the hollow man one of the vampire gods taunting you through the radios and tvs as you progress and i like those types of things so it did pretty well and the characters that you play as too well specifically the banter that can be had between them if you choose to play co-op i thought it was really fun hearing some of the back and forth between devinder and layla as they take on this world of redfall together whether it was commenting on the use of an umbrella power or just giving opinions about the situation and bouncing dialogue back and forth between them specifically right um you given any thought to where all the extra oh. tissue comes from when the vampires regenerate? oh geez are you serious they're trying to kill us. Absolutely. All that cellular differentiation is fascinating. Oh, dork. <laughs> and it's not easy to do to balance who says what and when they say it and how they say it and how someone responds based on what characters are present. It's an impressive little detail that went a long way. But as far as things I like about the game, unfortunately, that's about where it ends. Let's get into some of the other aspects that really held this back from being a good experience. Starting off with... The world itself, one of the most boring open worlds that you could possibly explore through. <sighs> Is there anything of interest around? Oh. Another one of these. Nope. <sighs> yes. The environments within them had interesting things to say, but as you wander through the barren and empty streets or fields of Redfall, you'll find nothing, nothing but the same cultists attacking other cultists once in a while, or a vampire attacking some cultists every now and again. There's no interesting encounters you could partake in, there's no interesting side quests you can stumble across, there's nothing worthy of exploring in the world itself because all you'll be greeted with is our weapons that you can easily obtain better versions of by defeating say the rook who spawns towards the middle of the game all the time <laughs> and so there's no reason to go looting in some of the buildings for weapons there's no reason to go into the buildings to collect money itself like in past arcane games you can pick up random items in the environment to scavenge for money that you can then bring back to buy new upgrades but unlike past arcane games where that money was actually useful to buy new schematics new upgrades new ways to maneuver around new types of bullets and ammo or restock your supplies here there's five things you can buy lock picks Rewire kits, you can buy health packs, you can buy weapons, or you can restock your ammo. All of which you find plenty of in the open world if you just play normally. Leveling up loses its excitement pretty quickly when you realize that there's no skills in the game that really will change the way that you play. All of them, or most of them, are typically more radius to your skills or longer duration, those sorts of things. Maybe you try to do some skills that provide additional healing for you and your teammates versus offensive skills that you can do, but your, op your ultimate will always operate the exact same way no matter how many times you play Devinder. That's just how the skill trees work in Redfall. 
What if, for example, you could use Devinder's Javelin? Instead of doing damage, you convert it to something that heals if you throw it at a teammate. Nope, it's always just going to do shock damage, but you can upgrade it so that it hits more enemies. Despite the good environments, like I mentioned, exploration at a point eventually becomes more of a chore to do. If you really want to know what's going on in Redfall and you want to hear all of the character stories, and I'm sure there's good ones in there, that's why it's such a shame to see this happen to this type of game. I'm sure there's great stories being told through some of the notes, but it just went too long and I didn't care. I didn't want to read yet another one. And I didn't want to scavenge the building for a weapon that's possibly going to be worse than the ones I have or just marginally better. Again, like I said, throughout playing the game, you'll do certain things, whether it's killing a specialty vampire or completing a mission, and this little bar will tick up, signaling that the vampire gods are about to send the rook onto you. A more powerful enemy, a little bit more tanky, and he wasn't terribly hard to defeat, but he did become a bit annoying. And he always dropped a legendary, so if you felt that you were falling behind, there's better ways to obtain loot than by scavenging random buildings. Another way would be through the vampire nests, which were cool. Let's talk about those. Vampire nests. These are the areas where Arcane really shows some of their more creative designs by melding paranormal environments together, mashing them into these procedurally generated spaces. Unfortunately, these two become a big disappointment after a while. Every single one of them just ends in a straight line. Very quickly, you'll see yourself passing through the same environments, and it didn't take a handful of them before that started happening. I saw the same logs, the same ferris wheel, the same gas station where the heart is nested. There wasn't nearly enough variation to keep these interesting, and there were no divergent pathways to go. You just keep going straight down the road until you get to the heart. Instead of throwing in endlessly procedurally generated landscapes that you could go through, this could have been an opportunity for Arcane to take a step back and design a couple handcrafted ones with the traditional level design that we know and love from them, that we know they're capable of. Have a few select vampire nests that range in difficulty so you're not going to want to tackle them all at once and then go explore them. Choose the way that you want to make your way to the heart, whether it's through secret passages or through straight down the middle or using different disguises, whatever. Give players new powers because they're in this telekinetic space that defies the laws of the world anyway. Why not? Nope. Instead, you just run down the straight line. You get to the vampire heart. It's always released the same way by unlocking three tethers that you hold a button on. And you collect loot. Again, better way to get loot than scavenging random buildings where you may or may not find a good weapon. And then you head out before the timer gets out. Or don't get out before the timer runs out doesn't really matter you just lose experience if you don't get through the whole thing as for the vampire types themselves there are a variety of them that yes they behave a little bit differently i really did like the shroud that would surround you in darkness when it used its powers and that way you had to try to find it by navigating because you're just stuck in this darkness bubble it was pretty cool the angler could sometimes be a pain to deal with they do a lot of damage if they're able to grapple you with their hook but it led to some tense moments you try to get your way out of it before they fully reel you in that was fun i i like those moments and when i say all of these things about redfall that's not to say that i didn't have any fun with the game there were moments where the game was throwing both vampires and cultists at the same time at you that did make for tense situations but it's just marred by tons of issues like the horrible ai in the game yeah, there's a guy over there. All all of the friends are in combat. You can't really... Oh, hello. And then you have a sniper up there who's not sniping. You have a guard over there who's just standing. There were moments where if you were in a co-op session, the AI, even though you were right in front of them, would run straight past you to go to the other player. There were times where I got stuck. One instance, I got stuck completely unkillable. It was wonderful. I loved it. I was having the time of my life.
other instances several times in fact where vampires just wouldn't attack me i was able to make best bros with some of them it was pretty nice hang out with them go get some drinks have a good time Still a vampire, Hello? dude. If it wasn't a bug that was affecting the eye, it was just the pure incompetence of any of it. There's no stealth system in Redfall to be found anywhere. You can run up behind a cultist and punch him in the back and that'll do him in quickly, but other than that, no takedown moves, no sneaking up, everything just devolves into a gunfight anyway. Can't count the amount of times I got in a fight and there'd be AI watching from the distance, staring at the combat, or looking in the general direction I should say, and they don't simply react because somehow it's out of their range. No response whatsoever. The vampires typically only have what feels like one attack each. For example, the standard vampire will run up and try to claw you, but you can just strafe in circles around it and it will never be able to hit you indefinitely just keep doing that until it's dead you can't win where do they go there they are they're listing lazily to the left go left left Boy, this guy knows some maneuvers. The problem with this AI is now you're proceeding through a game that's supposed to have horror undertones to it. You're going through these scary environments, but you're no longer doing it with any amount of fear of caution at all. And the lack of ability to stealth any encounter properly completely null and voids the point of trying to take any of these situations cautiously if the AI wasn't enough. And that's further exemplified by the level design that was provided, the three entrances you could go to, which favors you running and gunning into every scenario, which is all of it does not work for what they were probably going for. The vampire god fights, are those any more fun? These legendary battles against the people who have blocked out the sun and made waves higher so that nobody can cross them. No, they're not any more interesting. Bloody Tom, which is one I was looking forward to the most, thought he had the coolest environment. You get to him and he has two attacks. That's all I can remember, at least. Two attacks. You dodge him by hiding behind a rock. That's all you have to do. But maybe the stories and the writing and the missions can carry players through this experience, one might hope, but unfortunately, not here either. I generally think that arcane games have improved over the past couple experiences with their storytelling, especially Prey, which was my all-time favorite arcane game. It came from the studio making Redfall, the branch of arcane that made Redfall. But here, there's actually a regression. The missions that you go on will typically have one of two objectives, pick up X item or kill X vampire. That's it! There's really no deviation from that, and for some maddening reason, almost everything in Redfall involves the rule of threes. Find three dolls, collect three underboss skulls, to unleash three tethers to attack the heart, destroy three tree amber things. It's just threes everywhere! Seriously, if you've played Redfall, or maybe you play it at some point, you'll see what I'm talking about, or already have seen what I'm talking about. The story missions in order to progress the main quest line too doesn't really provide anything interesting either. In order to progress the story you have this padding where you need to go liberate some safe houses. In order to liberate a safe house you first discover them, then complete some random side quest that helps make the neighborhood safer. Great! Are these side missions interesting, especially because you need to do them in order to progress the main story? No, not at all. It's going to be some generic kill vampire quest. You might even get the same one multiple times just bringing you to a different location. Sometimes defending from blood bags that are coming in, other times destroying some vampire tree. Oh, and I just want to review this footage here for what I thought was a genuine problem with the UI in the game. The cursor will lock itself to points of interest that are labeled, so here I'm trying to put a marker down inside the ring where the objective is located, but it keeps going towards the location nearby, and that was just something frustrating. Once you complete some generic mission that you have to go off and do, you'll be able to go after the vampire underboss, which should be some exciting, cool set piece moment with a new, unique vampire you don't otherwise see, but no, 
unfortunately, the underbosses are always going to be the same variants of vampires you stumble across in the open world by just playing normally. They might have a unique power if they did, I really didn't notice it, but they fall, they get taken down as easily as any other vampire, they just have a little name really attached to them. Yes! Another one down! Bring on the vampire underboss! Let's go! Ah! I am the vampire underboss! Ah! Dude, I just killed you. No, fool! That was a normal siphon! I am the true vampire no, you're underboss! The exact, you're, the, no, you're the exact same thing. No, I just fool! killed you. Behold! Oh, what? The barn keeper? Like, I'm supposed to be impressed by that? What, what does that mean? Flee the in terror of my title! No, it's not scary. Dude, I just killed you! Alright, I guess we're doing this again. And another thing, too, that I need to bring up as far as the mission design goes, You'll very often you'll be tasked with going to a new corner of the map to complete an objective. The story will send you over there, which most of the time would be good if there was something interesting along the way. More often than not, there isn't. And when you get there, I can't tell you how many times it would be you reach the location for this item. The item's somewhere else. Go somewhere else and bring it back. And then do the thing you were meant to do. It just... It got old very quickly. You also always need to go back to one of the two main safe houses in order to pick up the main quest. You can't pick up any other quests besides the side ones or turn in quests from any of the safe houses that you unlock. So it's just a little minor inconvenience there when you're playing the game as well. Just these small things that compound and add up and make it difficult to enjoy the good parts that you do find in Redfall. I think that's about all I can really say for Redfall. I'm really just hoping that this is a scenario where Arcane bit off a bit more than they can chew, or it's an overambition, one of those more optimistic ways to look at what could have possibly happened with Redfall. We know that the studio is capable of so much greater, which is why this hurts so much. Arcane is capable of masterclass gaming experiences, and unfortunately, this isn't it. The final score for Redfall is going to be a four out of 10. Five being an average game. I don't think it's fair to say that with all of the issues that are plaguing Redfall, that it is average. It's not nearly worth the $70 asking price that it has at launch. Maybe on Game Pass if you want to give it a try, but honestly, there's so many other better experiences. Maybe a couple months down the line after some polish, some maybe new characters have come out, then it might be worthwhile to jump into. But for now, I would stay away from this one. Arcane. We both know that you're capable of so much more. And I look forward to seeing that happen in the next one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I hope to see you all next time. So long, everybody.